Right, the final question. And the diagram shows the curve. Y equals f of x, where f of x is minus 4x cubed plus 9x squared plus 10x minus 3. There it is. Verify that the curve crosses the x-axis at 3, 0, and hence state a factor of f of x. Well, verify just means sub the numbers in and check it works. So what we're doing here is verifying that 3, 0 satisfies this equation. We are going to do, for part 1, f of 3, and we want that to be equal to 0. That gives us minus 4 times 3 cubed, plus 9 times 3 squared, plus 10 times 3, minus 3. And we ought to show enough to show that we've actually done some working out here. Um, what is that? 3 times... Uh, 3 cubed is 27, and 4 times that is 108, so that's minus 108, plus 9 times 9, so plus 81, plus another 30, minus 3. I reckon that's looking pretty good, isn't it? That's probably enough to show it. 81 plus the 30 is, uh, is it, what, 111. Take away the 3 is 108, take away the 108 is 0. Great. So, a factor of f of x. Well, a factor of f of x then would be x minus 3. Brilliant. A couple of marks. Nice marks to start. Um, part 2. Express f of x as the product of a linear factor and a quadratic factor. Well, this is where they're hinting at long division, but we don't need to go into the whole long division thing. There's no need to put ourselves through that pain and suffering. What we can say is that minus 4x cubed plus 9x squared plus 10x minus 3 is equal to x minus 3 times something. And because I know that x minus 3 is a factor, I know there isn't a remainder. I don't need to worry about any remainder at the end of this. I can just work through it one term at a time. So, here we've got minus 4x cubed. It can only possibly come from doing x times the thing that's here at the front. This must be minus 4x squared. It's got to be, isn't it? We've got um, a 9x squared there. Now looking through this, 9x squared, let's think this through. That could come by doing minus 3 times my minus 4, or by doing x times whatever goes in that gap. Minus 3 times minus 4 is plus 12. I'm supposed to have plus 9. So I've got 3 too many. That gives me plus 12. I need to take away 3. This has to be a minus 3x in the middle there. Um, the last term, well actually the last term, because there's no remainder, <coughs> and that's a minus 3 there, it must be minus 3 times this thing at the end of my bracket. If I wasn't sure it was a factor, I'd, I'd have to work up to that. But that thing there must be a plus 1, wasn't it? So let's put plus 1 in there. And let's just, to reassure ourselves, let's just check. There's the 10x. We haven't done anything with the 10x yet at all. 10x we can only get by doing x times plus 1 and minus 3 times minus 3. It's 10. That's good. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. Plus is the 1 gives us the 10. So that's it. And the question said, <coughs> write it as a linear factor and a quadratic factor. So there is x minus 3 times minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 1. It's not the neatest thing starting with that minus, but, but it's fine. There, there's our answer. We're really happy with that. Part 3. <coughs> it says, hence find the other two points of intersection of the curve with the x-axis. 
Well, the other two points of intersection are the other places where f of x equals zero. Which means where x minus 3 and minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. And we've got that one of them is where x minus 3 equals 0. We already knew that, that we don't need to worry anymore about that one. The other one is where this bracket equals 0. So minus 4x cubed minus, oh sorry, it's squared, x squared, minus 3x plus 1 is 0. We need to, to deal with that. Considering how many marks they're giving us for this, it's not going to be that difficult, is it? Um, we've, we've got to solve this. It, does it factorise? I think it probably does, doesn't it? We probably, for two marks, are not going to dive into the quadratic formula or completing the square or anything like that. Uh, let's write it as 4x squared plus 3x minus 1, just by multiplying everything by minus 1. And, and does that, does that factorise? I reckon it does. I reckon it needs to be 4x and x. 1 and 1, and if that's a plus... And that's a minus, that works, doesn't it? 4x squared plus 4x minus x is 3x minus 1. So we get x equals a quarter and x equals minus 1 as our other two points. Hence, find the other two points of intersection of the curve with the x-axis. You know, just to be extra careful with this, I'm going to write 1 quarter 0 and minus 1, 0, just to stress that my other two points are where it crosses the axis, and we've got them. Brilliant. Five marks left. The region enclosed by the curve, the x-axis, and the x-axis is shaded in, in diagonal. Use integration to find the total area of this region. Right, we remember the thing about integration is that if we just dive straight into this and do the integration of the whole lot over that range, that bit up there will count as a positive amount, and that bit down there will be a negative amount, and if we do the whole thing at once, the positive amount will take away the negative amount, and we'll get slightly less than we really mean. We'll get that amount, take away that amount, which doesn't really tell us anything. So we need to split this up into two separate bits, let's call that section A and that section B. We need to work on those two things separately and then work out the total by adding them together. So section A is the integral from, well where are these points? What do we have? Minus one, a quarter and three. So that must be minus one, that must be a quarter and that must be three. So the first thing to do is our integral from minus one to a quarter and get that negative bit. This is part four. The integral from minus one to a quarter of, what was our thing that we were integrating? Minus four x cubed plus 9x squared plus 10x minus 3. Okay, we're just doing a big definite integral now. Um, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So that would go to minus 4x to the 4 over 4. So minus x to the 4. 9x squared will go to 9x cubed over 3. 3x cubed. 10x is going to go to 10x squared over 2, so 5x squared. And minus 3, well that was minus 3x. Between minus 1 
and water. And we now start putting in those limits and working out the values. This is going to be minus a quarter to the four plus three times a quarter cubed plus five times a quarter squared minus three times a quarter. Take away minus minus one to the four plus three times minus one cubed plus five times minus one squared minus three times minus one running out of space. There we are. Long kind of brackets at the end. Sorry. Um, you will put this into your calculator really carefully. Looks like Emily is actually doing it. It will give you some value which we expect to be negative because it was underneath the axis. It, is it only Emily who's working this out? So we're putting all our eggs in the basket with this one. Very fitting to be an Easter eggs in the basket. I'm just talking nonsense now. Nearly there. <coughs> Have you got an answer? No. no. It's not a very nice answer. I, I did it. I think it is. Are you ready for this? Minus 1125 over 256. In fact, it's the kind of answer that makes you think I maybe have done that wrong. <coughs> but you haven't. That's the, that's the answer that you get. Now, uh, that's area A. Area B. Well, how we can do this quite quickly, can't we? Because area B is the integral from a quarter up to three of that same stuff. Oh, I've run out of digits. Two of them. And we've, we've already integrated all of that stuff. So it's actually it's just putting in the limits of three and a quarter into the same thing we've got. Minus x to the four plus three x cubed plus five x squared minus three x between quarter and three. So we sub in those same values. <coughs> minus three to the four plus three times three cubed plus five times three squared minus three times three. Take away the same thing with the quarter in there. And again, because time is short, I'm going to tell you what I think the answer is. 9317 over 256. So we've now got our two areas. 9317 over 256 and the much smaller negative area. But remember, in order to get the total area that is shaded in that diagram, we need to ignore that minus sign. Because it's only a minus sign because it's underneath the x-axis. So the shaded area is what was that? One one two five without the minus sign underneath it plus nine three one seven over two five six and the answer to that is five thousand two hundred and twenty one over one hundred and twenty eight. And of course, if you do a, a decimal equivalent, that would still be right. It didn't say find the exact solution, did it? There we go. And dead on 12 o'clock, that is maths.